Here we go. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine stream and another exciting adventure on Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and yeah, we are going to have a bit of an adventure tonight because I'm going to be doing something I don't do that often. I've been doing a little more, more lately than I have been in the past. We're going to open a white wine. And not just any white wine. This is a uh, this is a Sauvignon Blanc, and uh, it's actually a, a little bit of a blend. And we're going to learn about one of the grapes that I we've never really talked about before. Although I think we have tried another uh, wine in the past that has had uh, that grape in it. I think. Uh, uh, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. But I think so. But we are going to be checking that out. We're going to be pairing it with some food. Of course, we're going to be toasting birthdays, anniversaries, and some interesting national days. A wedding. We're going to be toasting a wedding, too. A very special wedding. But uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to uh, talk about some stuff. Uh, and we're going to... Um, actually, I've got something to tell you about uh, my adv recent adventure at the post office. So, <laughs> that should be interesting. Anyway, so, if you're just joining me for the first time, this is Drink with Rick. This is a stream of consciousness kind of show where we open up wine and uh, review it and pair it with some foods and just have a good time. Just kick back. This is a, a Saturday night. Everybody just sitting back and kicking back and enjoying themselves, chatting with each other on the chat. And we have the do, we do have the chats open. So chat with me. Uh, I want to hear from you. I want to hear how your week went and what you're drinking or what you're not drinking or what you'd like to be drinking or what you'd like to see me drinking and you know what if i uh if it sounds like something i'd be interested in I, you know i might try to drink it too we have done that quite a few times in the past i have been taking requests for wines to review and i have received uh, a number of free wines to review and i have given them a fair review as well so we'll uh, we'll see how this one works tonight anyway so if you're joining me uh, just now, we are, of course, live on Facebook. You can catch us live on Facebook and on our Facebook page at Drink With Rick. You can also catch us live on YouTube. Uh, that's Drink With Rick on YouTube. And you can engage with me uh, in the chat there as well. I've got the live chat going. Also on Twitch. We're live on Twitch. And you know what? I'm really spending a little bit more time uh, learning more about Twitch and doing more with that lately. And uh, it, it's very, very interesting, fascinating platform so uh, we are live on twitch there and uh, also on uh, twitter via periscope we are live on twitter and i'll you know tweet me there and and i'll tweet you back also you can watch this live on our website at drinkwithrick.com that's drinkwithrick.com now i don't have a chat open there right now but uh, if you click on the the post for this episode this live episode there's a comment box in below that, and you can comment to me, and I will respond in kind. Also, on um, if you miss the if you miss the show or you can't watch it live because you're multitasking or, or commuting or whatever it is that you're doing, you can of course catch the podcast. That's at 10 p.m. Uh, the podcast uh, version of this show goes out at 10 p.m. Eastern time on Monday nights, every Monday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, that's at drinkwithrick.com. And also on uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, Deezer. Uh, we're all over the place, folks. And on your favorite uh, smart speaker. Just say, you know, name a smart speaker. Play Drink With Rick podcast. And they should be able to play the latest episode of Drink With Rick. And, um, of course, you can subscribe to the show. Uh, on our website at drinkwithrick.com, and that's where you can uh, hit all the, the, the buttons to subscribe, and also by email. You can subscribe via email, and every time a new episode drops, you will get th that latest episode in your inbox uh, from drinkwithrick.com. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to be talking about tonight. Oh, you know, before I do that, let me, I don't want to forget anyone in the chat. Tim's in the chat. My good friend Tim. Tim says, hi, Rick, and right back at you, Tim. Hi, I hope you're doing well. How's your daughter doing? I uh, hope your family's doing fine. I'm glad you're here. Stick around. We've got a white wine to drink, and even if you're not into white wine, this should be a lot of fun. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see, check on um, Twitch. Uh, we've, we've got a, a couple people following us in Twitch right now. Uh, feel free to jump in and say hi and tell me how you're doing. 
and uh, nothing going on at uh, Twitter at the moment, I don't think, and uh, that's that's okay. That's okay. Uh, on let's see this YouTube. YouTube's kind of quiet tonight, but uh, I, I kind of expect that. We get we've been getting a crowd in Twitch lately, and um, I've really been enjoying that. And uh, I've got, I've got something to say about that a little bit later too. But before we go into all that, let's go ahead and check out this wine. Now, what we're drinking tonight. This is a Pierre Angulaire. This is a, uh, primarily it's a Sauvignon Blanc. This is a 2018. And I'll tell you how I acquired it. I, I picked up a bottle of this at Sunset and Vine in uh, Boone, North Carolina, or actually Blowing Rock, uh, North Carolina. And uh, yeah, it, it caught my eye. Actually, it was a recommendation from uh, one of the, the uh, proprietors there, and because I was looking for a, an organic wine, one that, that was a little more organic, and uh, he suggested this one, and we're going to try it out tonight and see how it works. Ed's in the chat. Ed says, hey, and, uh, and Stephanie's in the chat. Ed, it's great to see you. I'm, I'm glad you're here. And uh, Stephanie, also, likewise, I'm glad you're here uh, also. It's good to see you, and stick around. We're going to have some fun tonight. And uh, Stephanie, send me send me a promo of your podcast. She has a great podcast, by the way, and um, uh, growing uncomfortable. And I do listen to it. And uh, send me a, a promo for your podcast. I'll I'll be happy to play it here. Uh, we do that, and and uh, uh, you know, I, I think uh, some of our listeners would really enjoy enjoy uh, the podcast. Anyway, back to the wine here for a moment. I've been hanging on that for a long time. Uh, let's take a look at the back label. Of the wine, and I'm going to read this to you. It's a Pierre Angulaire Blanc. It's uh, 75% Sauvignon Blanc, 15% Semillon, and 10% Muscadel. Interesting thing about Semillon. We're going to learn about the Semillon grape uh, uh, in a little bit uh, as well. That should be a lot of fun. Learn some things about it. It says here, and it's in fine type, so I'll, I'll read it carefully. As you contemplate your first bottle of Pierre Angulaire Bordeaux Blanc, I have to confess there's a secret to share. While Bordeaux is a cornerstone support for the concept of red wine terroir, I, and although I make a Merlot-driven wine called a pen, uh, Pentimento in Montagne Saint-Emilion, I actually drink more white wine than anything else. In an effort to quell, uh, see, it, it is hard to read. It's very small type. In an effort to quench my literal and professional thirst for white wine in Bordeaux, I have now arrived in the uh, Pelligrew sector near the commune of uh, Landuro, and I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this, uh, in the heart of Entre de Mer. My mentor and friend Stefan Derenancourt started this project as in four. Boy, it's hard to read. I uh, started this project in four gravelly clay and limestone parcels that are harvested by hand and vinified separately, employing a slow press and temperature controlled fermentations via wild yeast in stainless steel tanks. The name Pierre Angulaire is how one says cornerstone in French. In older days, as one set out to build a house, an offering of wine was often placed on that key block of stone from which all the future stones were to be balanced. It was symbolic of the produce of the people who were to live in that place and the means of their, sub, uh, of their subsistence. subsistence. Uh, suffice it to say, white wine is a cornerstone of any house I'm going to live in, and now I have my Pierre Angulaire in place. And that's from uh, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Dupree, Dupree, Michael Dupree, a winemaker. It's hard to read some of this because it's such a small type, and um, well, <laughs> anyway, there's, um, let's see, where is the other information? Okay, it's a product of France. This is a French wine. Uh, Appalachian, uh, the, it's, uh, the, the original, uh, the origin is uh, the Bordeaux Control E, is what it says. It's uh, white wine, 750 milliliter bottle. There is 12% alcohol in the 750 milliliter bottle of Bordeaux Blanc, this uh, Pierre Languerre. And uh, whoa, that was a lot. To, I tell you, that was a long <laughs> read. There was a lot in here to read. Uh, it seems like as the older I get, the smaller this type is getting. Very, very difficult for me to read it. Anyway, so that is what is on the back of the bottle. Now, now something about this bottle, as I said before, I picked it up in um, Blowing Rock, and this was about, I want to say it was sometime uh, late last year, 
um, the last time we went up to to check out the uh, the campus of uh, Appalachian State, where my son will be going to in just a few short days, and uh, I picked up a bottle of red and a bottle of white, and this was the white, and it was recommended to me uh, there by the proprietor who said that uh, this was a, a really, really good um, low alcohol uh, white wine that is uh, pretty much uh, vented in a, in a um, you know in a, in a more natural way rather than adding all the extra sulfites and things like that. It was really more naturally uh, naturally fermented. So I think I'm, I'm I'm really looking forward to trying that and see how this this tastes. Uh, let me go back to the chat for just a moment see how what's going on in the chat. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, Ed and Tim and Stephanie's there, and anybody in Twitch yet? Okay, we have a couple of uh, folks in Twitch, um, not talking to me, but they're there. <laughs> Talk to me. Tell me how you're doing. So, uh, let's go ahead and open up this wine. And to do that, well, I don't need my screw cap. I have my, my screw cap. My <laughs> I haven't had any yet, folks. Uh, I have. I I don't need this my corkscrew. I have a screw cap. That's what I have. So we're going to open up this wine. Simple enough. And uh, I have my trusty, I have my trusty aerator from the uh, Veneto Wine Lover set. And we have the aerator there to pour in. And of course, uh, to contain this, this nectar, this wine, I have my trusty, uh, this is my Galway Genuine Irish crystal glass from Ireland, given to me by my uh, by my uh, bosses at uh, By Two Way Radios. We're going to pour a little of this in here, just a little bit. We're going to give it a, a little swirl, and then we're going to let it sit for just a moment to to breathe. And while it's doing that, let's learn a little bit more about this wine. Now, I couldn't find a whole lot about it out there on the internet as far as as far as pricing is concerned. So, I, I, to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of pricing on this wine. Uh, I did see it somewhere. I can't remember where exactly. Right offhand, I get. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I must have closed the window for it. But um, it, it was uh, nine ninety nine is where I saw it. And I'll tell you what I paid for it. I paid from Sunset and Vine. I still have the original receipt here. I ha I paid uh, $14.99, $14.99 for this. Now, that was a while back. That was well before the pandemic began. So this bottle of wine, if you've noticed in previous episodes, that bottle of wine has been sitting right there. And no, I didn't turn it on its side, Matt. If you're, if you're watching later, Matthew, um, yeah, you know, I didn't store it on its side. I, I could have, but I, I wasn't thinking I was going to store it that long. I, I thought I was going to drink it right away. That's why I didn't, but uh, it wound up sitting there for quite a while. So we'll see how it, we'll see how it uh, works out. So um, as far as the wine is concerned, couldn't find too much on it, but I did find out some interesting things about the Semillon grape, and I'm going to share those with you tonight. So let's give this a, a little whiff and see what we've got in here. Now, right off the nose, getting some pear and a, a, a little apple in there. And uh, man, it smells just a hint of pineapple. Just a little hint of pineapple. It's amazing what you can pull from a, a wine. That's why wines, that's why wines are so fascinating, because you can pull so many different flavors and, and things out of a grape. Out of a grape, mind you. It's just amazing. But there are a lot of different, uh, and, and this is white wine, I, it's a Bordeaux Blanc, so I, I, would, ex I would expect more citrusy, uh, you know, flavors, that sort of thing. So uh, I'm not surprised. I'm not really surprised. Let's give it a, let's give it a taste. Mmm. Wow. Very interesting combination. Okay, I'm not getting so much of the pear now. I'm getting more of the apple. Uh, a little little citrus, a little blend of citrus. Maybe may some lime in there. I'm, I'm, I'm tasting some lime. But I am getting some, um, getting a little hint of grapefruit in there. 
and uh, maybe just a little bit of um, yeah, it's 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 maybe just a little bit of um, mango, just a just a hair of that. Yeah, apple, lime, and I think a little bit of pineapple. A very interesting combination. I'll we'll have to have some more of this just to be sure. You know, I'm not a big fan of pineapple per se. I do like it on a pineapple upside down cake. I do like those. Um, but um, uh, apples, I like apples. Uh, I like apple sauce. I, I, I do, although I can't eat apples so much anymore because they just don't sit very well with my stomach. But uh, limes, I love lime. I love lime. And this is um, this is also fairly bold, bold tasting. It has kind of a bold taste. It's it's um, it has a light finish to it, but it has a bold. Uh, just just right at the outset, it's kind of a bold, more bold flavor, and it is fairly dry. It is fairly dry. This is not a sweet wine. You would expect, you know, some people would expect white wines to be all on the sweet side, and they're not. There are some very dry white wines. Although this white wine seems tends to be a little bit drier than some of even some of the um, uh, some of the other uh, Sauvignon Blancs that I've I've got some other Sauvignon Blancs back there, but um, some of the other ones I've tasted this seems a little bit on the drier side than those. Mm. Okay, now I'm starting to get a little pear in there. Now I'm starting to taste a little bit of pear, not strong, but a little bit. I will say it's kind of medium. Um, it, it's not real acidic. It's kind of a. It's on the lighter side of that. It's not 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 really acidic or anything like that. This is a kind of wine that, and I look. What I did find on on Bordeaux uh, Blanc wines, but before is that they do pair well with things like seafood and uh, usually things like fish, um, and uh, you know poultry, chicken, things like that. And uh, sometimes a, a, a duck, and uh, it, they will go pretty well with uh, pork dishes. If you're into to pork, I'm not really a, a pork person, but uh, I'm a kind of a portly, porky person, but not a pork person. Uh, a little self-deprecating humor there. Uh, we haven't got that far into the bottle yet, folks. <laughs> the show's just starting. So um, anyway, that that's the kind of thing that the 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 Sauvignon Blancs and the Bordeaux Blancs are are, are known for uh, for pairing with. Now, what I have tonight to pair it with, and I didn't show you this earlier. What I have tonight is this. I have a um, uh, this is a little dish my wife she prepared for me, a lovely wife she. I do have some turkey. It looks like some roast turkey here. That would work, I think. And I have a couple of cheeses. We're kind of on the light side tonight, folks, because uh, I I didn't uh, I wasn't really feeling great this morning, so I didn't want to overdo it on the food. So I've been kind of eating on the light side to, today. So we're just going with a light light uh, tasting here with the food, the light pairing. But I've got the turkey, and of course I have uh, I have some Gruyere Gruyere cheese, and also my favorite Trader Joe's creamy Gouda. And I don't know how it's going to go well with the Gouda. It might be okay with the Gruyere. Uh, I don't know about the Goody yet, but we'll find out. We haven't had a we haven't had a miss on it yet. We'll 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 check it out. Anyway, in the meantime, before we do anything else, let's go back to the chat for just a moment. And um, it is. Let me check uh, Twitch. Ah, Tom Antio's in Twitch. Tom Antio says, "Ever had duck?" Yes, I have. I have had duck on uh, numbers of occasions. And you know what? The the thing about duck is, um, I. I uh, I, I like it in, prepared in certain ways. I don't like it prepared every way. And now some roast duck. I like roast duck. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, one that, that someone's uh, like broiled or, or something like that, uh, maybe on the, on the lighter side. I, I, I do like a good roast duck. But um, it, we don't have it very often, uh, obviously. But uh, every once in a while, I, I do enjoy uh, some roast duck, and I think this would probably go okay with 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 that. I I don't know, haven't tried it with a uh, duck, <laughs> so I couldn't say. But it might be okay. I'm pretty sure it'll go well with chicken. Uh, it this is definitely a fish kind of like if you if you like. Uh, 
a fish, good fish fillet or something like that. Um, this would probably go fine with that. Most most of these Bordeaux Blancs do, uh, and the, the Sauvignon Blancs do uh, go pretty well with fish. Uh, this should be fine. This should be fine with a good fish. Mm. We're going to try a little bit more of that in a moment. But let's go ahead and pair it with some foods. Let's, let's, taste, let's test it out, do some tasting. Now, I have the turkey here. And actually, theoretically, because this is considered poultry, it should be okay with the turkey. Now, I don't know about smoked turkey, but uh, but I think this is a roast turkey, so I think, yeah, it's more of a, let's see how this pairs up. Hmm? Yeah, it works pretty well. Works pretty well with this with this turkey. In fact, I might have another piece of it. This is actually um, I kind of like it with the turkey. It's good. Works works well with the turkey. I'd I'd have another bite of that. The turkey's actually pretty good, by the way. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Not bad with the turkey. It's okay. Okay, I could do uh, I could do. Turkey with the, with this wine. Uh, let's try it with the uh, the Gruyere. Let's try that. This one with the with white cheese, the white wine with the white cheese. Why not? I think this might be okay with the Gruyere because it's. Well, let me finish here. Oh, yeah, that works out pretty well. I like that really well. Now, let me explain what I was going to say just uh, just a moment ago. The thing about Gruyere cheese, the thing about Gruyere cheese is that uh, it kind of, it's it's kind of like a, a cousin to, Sw you know, the Swiss cheese. It's just sort of like a Swiss cheese in a way. And this one has kind of a, a finish to it when it goes down the aftertaste. It, it, it tastes a little bit like a Swiss cheese, a little bit. And, uh, of course, we know that turkey and Swiss are a great pairing together. I think that uh, if you had a sandwich or a sub with uh, these two cheeses together, this wine would probably go quite well with both of them. And you know what? I think I'm going to kind of test that theory. I don't have any bread with me right now. Well, I have a cracker. Why not? Well, not. let's try it with a cracker. That could be fun. That's the closest thing to bread I have up here. <clears> hmm. <throat> That's actually a good combination, by the way. I like that. Hmm. Tastes pretty good. Chicken the Gruyere. Let's try it with the wine. I like that. We we have to start mixing, matching, uh, matching, and making some interesting combos with this. I like that. That's actually pretty good. I like it. I have a. Turkey and Swiss sub or a turkey and Gruyere sub with uh, with this wine. It's not, but it's actually a, a pretty good wine. I think one reason is because it's been sitting back there, kind of uh, maturing a little bit because it is a 2018. Let me clear my palate for a moment. I'll clear my palate and then we're going to try it. <clears throat> we're going to try it with the. Uh, Trader Joe's Creamy Gouda. This is the big taste test, right, folks? Because we haven't had a miss with the Creamy Gouda yet. All these bottles of wine that I've tried with this Gouda in the past, it's in fact, it's this has actually saved a couple of bottles of wine that I uh, that weren't exactly my favorites, and then actually, I think it actually saved the experience. So, not too sure about the Gouda, but we'll try it out. Hmm. I love this creamy Gouda. Mm. Oh, yeah, I like that. Mm. Yeah, it works with the Gouda. It works with the Gouda. I'm not going to complain about that. I think it's okay. Another winner there. Uh, where, where are we? Are 20 for 20? Something like that. <laughs> the Gouda comes through again.
No, I think that, that's, that's actually a decent pairing all the way around for all of them. But um, this Bordeaux Blanc, yeah, I could uh, I could drink this. I, you know, they, say, they do say that this wine um, is supposed to go good with appetizers. And for all intents and purposes, that's what we've been having here are appetizers. So, yeah, I think it pairs fairly well with these. And once again, I picked this up at Sunset Vine. That's up in Bowling Rock, North Carolina. And um, I, I really, uh, where's my notes on that? I had some notes on this. I had the website, but I, I can't find it uh, right offhand. Anyway, if you go up there and talk to uh, Bennett, he's one of the proprietors there, and uh, and uh, let him know I sent you. I'm not going to make any, I don't make anything off that, okay? I'm just saying, tell him I sent you. Or don't, it's okay. But if you happen to go up there, he'll take care of it. He's a really nice guy, and he knows he knows his wines. We had a really, the last time I was up there, we had a really great conversation about different wines. Really enjoyed, uh, uh, I learned some things from him. We, we had a great discussion on it, and uh uh, kind of, kind of hit it off there uh, a little bit. So I, 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 th I thought that was a great. I had a great time there. I really did. And their shop is really, really nice. Uh, so uh, ch check it out. I recommend uh, Sunset Vine up there in Blowing Rock. Anyway, so uh, let me get back to the chat for just a moment. Don't neglect the chat. Never do that. And I'll see what's going on. But uh, it's kind of quiet. Let's go back here just a moment and. Uh, Check my notes. Okay. We've got the pair with food. We've done the pairing with food, but we're going to learn something about this, uh, the Semyon grape. And that's what I think this could be a lot of fun to, to learn about. Because this is the one grape that I've never really, I, I didn't really know that much about at all. I, I've learned a lot about it, but I tell you what, I'm going to pull from Wikipedia because uh, I can't keep so much of this stuff in my head anymore, so I'm going to use Wikipedia as a guide on some of this. I know, can't always trust Wikipedia, but uh, when it comes to the grapes, there's a lot of interesting information on there, and you can uh, look it up on Wikipedia yourself and follow along if you want. Anyway, we're going to learn a little bit about the, the Semillon grape. Now, an interesting thing about, the, about Semillon, Semillon, uh, that has the accent on it, and uh, to be honest, uh, this this bottle of wine does not particularly have the accent on the on Semillon. So, uh, but the thing is, it did gener uh, it did originate in France. This bottle of wine did. So, uh, I'll explain what is going on here with that in just a moment. Let me pull up the information I have on the Semillon grape. And reading from Wikipedia here, it's a, it's a golden skin grape used to make dry and sweet white wines, mostly in France and Australia. And uh, this, uh, the, the, and it's not all France and Australia, it's, it's grown in other places too, but that's primarily where it originated from. The, the name Semillon is also, it's also known as a, um, a Blanc du Colomier Maga Gunter River Riesling. Uh, Gunter River Riesling. Um, Riesling. I don't ever know how to pronounce that. I really don't. I'm terrible at that. Just just trust me on that. It's 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 known as any of these names and, and a few more, as a matter of fact. There's, it's also known as a, a Groindruf, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I know Windruf. And the thing is about Windruf, the, the, uh, the, that name, it's... Uh, the name Windruf means wine grape. That's what that means. And uh, the Semillon grape, basically, it's native to the Bordeaux region in France. It, uh, oh, I forgot to put these up, didn't I? It's uh, originated in the Bordeaux region of France, and uh, it was known as uh, Semillon de Saint-Emilion in 1736. Well, Semyon also resembles the local pronunciation of the town's name. Pronunciation of the town's name. It first arrived in Australia in the early 19th century, and by the 1820s, the grape covered over 90% of South Africa's vineyards, and that's where it was known as Windruff. Now, it was once considered to be the most planted grape in the world, but it's, uh, apparently it's no longer the case. Uh, it's... Uh, in Chile, in Chile, uh, the vineyards are made up of over 75% Semillon. Uh, that well, that was in the 1950s. They were made up of overnight. Uh, 
Chile's vineyards were made up of over 75% uh, Semillon, but today it's only just 1% of the South, Afri uh, the South African Cape vines. Now, this is a golden white grape with thin skin. That's basically uh, how it looks when it's on the vine. Golden white, thin skin, and uh, the taste is, it has an interesting taste. They, they say the taste of this grape is a little bit uh, uh, reminiscent of burnt toast, honey, citrus flavors of lemon, lime, or green apple. Hence, and the, the, the interesting thing is we, we were tasting um, the lime and apple flavors a little bit in this wine. So that I think that, uh, that, that sort of contributed to that taste. A little bit in this particular wine. The wine itself, the wine itself is often blended with uh, Sauvignon Blanc and Muscadel, as it is in this case. Now this this is a, a grape that is, uh, from what I understand, is easy to cultivate and uh, produces quite a few grapes on, on the vine. But it's it's also rather heavy grape and has some low acidity and an almost oily texture. And uh, along with the Sauvignon Blanc and the Muscadel, Semillon is one of only three approved white wine varieties in the Bordeaux region. It, it, now, the grape is also... The grape is also... Uh, con uh, contributing to making a lot of sweet wines such as the Sauternes, uh wine, for the grapes to be used in sweet wine production, they need to have been affected by uh, uh, botrytis, which is uh, also known as noble rot. And the fungus dries out the grapes and concentrates the sugar and the flavors in the grape berry to, to bring out a, a sweeter, a sweeter a grape, a sweeter flavor. In France... Uh, the Semillon grape is grown mostly in Bordeaux, where it is blended with Semillon Blanc and Muscadel, as we've already mentioned. When it's dry, it's referred to as Bordeaux Blanc and is permitted to be made in the appellations of uh, uh, Pesic Long, uh, Long Nan and, uh, and there's some of the other regions there, uh, of the, uh, some of the lesser known regions in France. And um, in this form, the Semillon is generally a minor constituent in the blend. However, when used to make the sweet wines of Bordeaux, it's often the dominant variety. And uh, then that's when they introduce the Botrytis uh, to uh, go in and, and or the, the noble rot to go in and um, make the fruit or make the grape uh, more sugary, uh, increasing the sugar level and then um, making it a lot more sweeter, a lot sweeter. So uh, the grape is, of course, uh, grown in France, where it originated. It's also grown in Australia and in South Africa and in Chile and in the U.S. Now, here's what I was going to get at when I was talking about the different pronunci uh, pronunci pronunciations, <laughs> pronunciations of... of uh, of uh, the Semillon. Now, with the accent, the Semillon accent, that is definitely a French uh, pronunciation of that grape and, this, and a French spelling of that grape. However, in Australia, um, they pronounce it without the the accent on it, and it's pronounced uh, Semillon, Semillon in in Australia apparently. And that's the difference. So they, they have a couple of different pronunciations, but depending on where you are, but either one is not necessarily the wrong way to say it. It just kind of depends on where you're from, apparently. It's also grown in the U.S. It's grown in California. It's grown in Washington State. It's grown in Idaho and in Texas. Now, the thing is about uh, having grown in the U.S., um, the... Uh, there are some wineries in Washington State that have produced Simeon as a varietal wine since the early 1980s, and some of them, some other wineries produce it for ice wine and late harvest wines. Um, the grape is also planted in some other countries as well, uh, aside from from those mentioned here. Uh, it's also planted in Argentina and Canada, and uh, 
in Niagara in British Columbia and recently, more recently in New Zealand. But uh, apparently <clears throat> in a lot of these uh, regions outside these areas, Cenelon is, is kind of unpopular and uh, is often criticized for lack of complexity and intensity. So um, <clears throat> for this reason, a lot of the plantings have decreased over the last hundred years. But that is pretty much the lowdown on the Semillon or the Semillon grape, depending on where you're from and how you want to pronounce it. Uh, that's pretty much uh, what that's all about. So we learned a little bit of something about the grape tonight, and I uh, hope, hope you did. Uh, I learned something about it. It's always fun to learn about these, these grapes. And, you know, there are so many grape varieties out there. There's so many of them. Uh, it's just amazing. My wife Cheese in the chat. She saw um, I saw a roadkill duck earlier. I can go back and get it for you. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm good. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. I don't <clears throat> I don't need duck that much. <laughs> Not that much. So uh, I appreciate uh, that. <laughs> I know it's a thought that counts, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, that's what we have on the grape. And I, you know what? I think what it's time for, I think it's time for, drum roll, uh, I think it's time for the uh, the birthdays. We have some birthdays. We have an anniversary. We have a wedding. That's pretty always exciting. I love weddings. love weddings. And uh, we have, uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, we have some national days to celebrate. So let's pour some more wine and get to the celebration, shall we? And celebrate along with me. Just toast and celebrate along with me. What we have here, first of all, up is my good friend Michael, Mike, uh, Mike Papanimus, uh, someone who I worked with and uh, always enjoyed working with when uh, when we worked at WOFL. He's another member of the WOFL Channel 35 alumni back in the day. Worked with him for many, many years. And uh, just a fun guy, just a really fun guy, a really uh, into to blues music, uh, really uh, a, a big blues fan, and um, I believe he plays, and uh, he's just, I just, uh, it was always a fun guy, he used to make me laugh quite a bit, but uh, Michael, your birthday is uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, 8, 9, that's Sunday, uh, in about an hour and a half, a little less than an hour and a half from now, an hour and 20 one minutes, I guess. Anyway, here's to you, Michael. It's been a while since I've seen you. We got to catch up one of these days. But uh, Mike's a, a, a really fun guy, and uh, it's an honor to honor to have known Mike all these years, and it's an honor to toast you as well. Happy birthday, Michael! Happy birthday! I hope you're doing really well. Oh, I almost forgot, Michael. I have to toast you again because I forgot the fireworks. How did I forget the fireworks? Look, if I ever forget the fireworks while I'm doing this, please shout out, shout out, tell me, yell at me, say, hey, Rick, don't forget the fireworks. <laughs> okay, I've got, now I've got the fireworks. So, Michael, you get another toast just for that. Here's to my good friend, Michael Papademus. Happy birthday. May you have many, many, many more. That's my good friend, Mike. Um, I have another one that uh, is is actually tomorrow. I'm going to hold that for kind of kind of last thing because I have something I want to say about about um, that one. But before then, let's go ahead and uh, toast my good friend Ron. Ron, Ron Wright. Your birthday is uh, I think this coming uh, what's the twelfth? Um, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think it's it's Wednesday. I believe yes, it's Wednesday. My good friend Ron, I'll uh, go way, way, way back, a long, long time ago. And uh, Ron, here's to you. Happy, happy birthday. And I hope you're doing well uh, also. I really hope you are. Here's to you. Happy birthday. Mr. Ron, good friend Ron Wright. Someone else who's having a birthday today, uh, not today, but Thursday, this coming Thursday, and I'm probably going to wind up toasting her again. Uh, it says she is resourceful. Yes, she is. She's <laughs> sometimes a little more too resourceful, I would say, don't you? Uh, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, she is. I got a little story about that, but but that's I'll if I remember. If you remind me, I'll I'll see if I can relay that. Anyway, um, 
uh, someone else is having a birthday Thursday. This coming Thursday, it's the 13th. That's uh, my friend Courtney. Courtney Snyder. Courtney Snyder. Uh, Courtney, if you're there, uh, say hi. If you're not, don't. You can say hi later uh, if you show up later. Um, but uh, Courtney, actually, Courtney is usually in the chat. She's uh, She comes in quite a bit. And uh, Courtney, if you're coming in late, I just want to say happy birthday to you coming up uh, this Thursday. And uh, you know what? I'm probably going to toast you again because it's so close to the next wine stream. Probably going to coast, uh, toast you next week, too. So here's to my good friend Courtney. Happy birthday. With fireworks. With fireworks. Um. Now, I, I, I have another birthday that I want to toast. This one's uh, very special to me. <clears throat> they're, they're, it's all, they're all very special to me, okay? I'm not diminishing anyone's birthday here. You're all special to me. But this one, um, I, I, I want to spend a couple of extra minutes talking about this individual. Um, this is for my good friend Renee. Um, Renee Wright. Um, she, uh, this is actually in memoriam. Uh, Renee passed away a few years ago. She passed away for, uh, about four or five years ago now. I think maybe it was a little longer than that. It's, the time flies. I just, it, it doesn't seem like that long ago, actually, but it was some years ago. But Renee uh, was, a, uh, uh, was an IT provider, a fellow um, alumni of uh, the early days of, of OnForce, uh, where we did uh, a lot of contract work for OnForce. But, uh, and that's how I met her. I met her uh, when I was doing some work with OnForce and the OnForce forums. Renee went on to be a very, a very dedicated and important member of uh, my force field uh, the forums. An avid listener, dedicated listener of the force field podcast when I started the force field podcast um, way back in 2006. And when I started the website, and then I said, well, I'm going to start my own forums. And then, of course, when the Force Field forums uh, kind of went down, a lot of the, the members of the Force Field, uh, excuse me, the OnForce forums, a lot of the members of OnForce that were in the forums <clears throat> moved over to the Force Field forums. And, um, and the Force Field forums are still there. They're still there. They're just not really tended to, uh, to uh, much, and they're not really very active anymore, but that I still keep them up because I, I wanted to keep up a legacy uh, for a lot of the uh, my friends in IT that uh, from those days. The thing about Renee, she was uh, she helped me put the site together essentially and she did it remotely and she was just a sweet, sweet person. She was a sweet lady, very dedicated and she volunteered her time. Uh, along with some of my other friends, Parrish and, and, and a few other uh, people that, that helped me out with managing the forums and the site, um, and Todd, Todd Hughes, and, and a few other people. Uh, but uh, Renee was, was really special in the sense that she really dedicated. She'd go in there, and, and she'd be there in late nights sometime, and she'd be do, putting in 100%. And she would help with uh, not just moderating the forums or, or, or acting as a... Um, uh, and she was an admin of the forums, but also the site in general. She helped me out quite a bit with, with various aspects of the site. And um, Renee, we, we lost Renee some time back uh, to, to cancer. She had, she had cancer and she passed away. She had it, and she was still helping me in the forums while she was battling this disease. She was, she was still, uh, as much as she could, she would come back and, and contribute and help in the forums and on the website. And she never complained about any of that stuff. In fact, she was saying, hey, you know, what can I do to help you out or whatever. That's just the type of person she was, a really sweet lady. And, um, and she was very good at what she did uh, as an IT professional. But she was a professional through and through. And um, we, we lost Renee, and that was uh, kind of a, a, a blow to all of us, all, all of us who knew her and who were friends with her, and also as uh, uh, someone who, who was a good, great assistant for uh, the website and the forums at the Force Field. And uh, I just want to give a special toast in memoriam to my good friend Renee Wright. Um, she uh, is missed, and she will never be forgotten. She will always be remembered. Renee, this is for you. Wherever you are, uh, happy birthday, and uh, we all love you, and we miss you. This is for my good friend, Renee. 
Um, I do have some anniversaries. Uh, well, I have an anniversary of toast and a wedding. So I know this is, we're shifting gears uh, dramatically here because I'm going from a downer to high to low to high. Let's try to stay on the high side, shall we? <laughs> Before we do that, let me check the chat. Oh, we've got folks in the chat now. Sorry, I kind of went off on this and I, I, was, I was distracted with my uh, memorial. But I want to say hi to uh, uh, I'm at Car 15 and uh, Mod 76 and Polo TV. Polo TV's in the chat. It's great to see you, Polo TV. And Alex Nanas um, and Killian88330. Killian uh, and, and X Jonathan. Uh, welcome, uh, Rasta uh, Lives. Uh, well, everybody in the chat here. Um, um, the chat's moving up quickly, so I can't. <laughs> But uh, they say, hi, Rick, and um, they say, uh, Mont says, rest in peace, Renee, and uh, you know what, I'm, I'm glad you're all here, it's great to see you all here, and I'll try to keep the rest of this a lot more upbeat than, than before, okay? <laughs> and uh, Polo TV says, Rick, we came with some friends to bring you more joy. I really appreciate that, thank you, I really appreciate that. We're going to talk about a little bit more about uh, uh, something else we did in, on Twitch here shortly. Uh, that I, I really appreciate uh, those of you who are in there Wednesday night. I, I really appreciate that, uh, and and I do appreciate everyone here in Twitch chat. Uh, you guys are great, and uh, I've been yeah, I've been doing more on Twitch lately, and I want to I want to I want to step that up a bit. I want to step that up a bit. This is great people. There's some great people on Twitch, and and uh, uh, really really enjoy uh, talking to all of you. Uh, let's see. We, let's before we get to uh, too far into some of that, let me go ahead and, and toast the anniversaries. I want to toast an anniversary to uh, uh, congratulations to uh, my good friends Jeffrey and Donna. Jeffrey and Donna Glaze. Jeffrey is uh, another uh, WOFL alumni. He goes way back with me to my days at uh, Channel 35 in Orlando, where we worked together for many, many years. Just like and, and Jeffrey and, and uh, Mike Papanimus, who I toasted earlier for his birthday. We all were good friends. We knew each other for many, many times. We were more like family. It was, it was very much a family type of thing because we all worked together so, so long. And our general manager, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, Norris Richel, was, uh, he was kind of a father figure to us. And just a great guy. And uh, I, I tell you, I'm, when I'm saying family, I mean, it was it was tight in the group. You ever watch the w, WKRP in Cincinnati or news radio or any of those shows? And it kind of had that kind of family feel to it. That's what this was. And very much so. Very much so. Um, but I want to give a shout out to my good friends Jeffrey and Donna Glaze, who are celebrating their 38th anniversary, 38 years together. Happy anniversary. And this is, uh, it was actually on Friday. On Friday, happy anniversary to Jeff and Donna. Happy anniversary to you. Wow, that is quite an achievement. That is just, and uh, keep, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> keep on doing what you're doing. Keep going strong. I'm going to toast you again just because I think that's quite an accomplishment. Ooh. That's, that's, just, that's just awesome. Happy anniversary to you. And also... Uh, I want to give a, this is kind of not really an anniversary, but it will be next year at this time. Um, my niece, my niece Savannah, and her new husband, Joe, Joseph, Joseph uh, Gibson, uh, Savannah and Joseph, and, and uh, they were married last Saturday. I missed them on the Saturday Night Wednesday because I was prepping for the stream, and I missed that, and, and I apologize. I apologize to both of you. I was really busy. I'm sure you two were busy on <laughs> your wedding day. But uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to say congratulations to Savannah and Joseph. And, um, you know, just, just uh, it's just awesome news. And I want to say um, I'm happy. Uh, to, to hear this news, and uh, I want to say, uh, may you have many, 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 many years of marital bliss. May, may you have a, an eternity of marital bliss together. That's just, just awesome. Here's my toast to you, Savannah and Joseph Gibson. Congratulations. And um, let's see. I, uh, let, let's go back to the chat here for just a moment. Let me let me just check on. Uh, okay, uh, 
Let's go back to Twitch because we've got a lot going on at Twitch. Uh, Rasta Life says, what do you think about French wine? I love a good French wine. I love a good French wine. I have had quite a few French wines. This is a French wine, by the way. We're drinking the, just to let you know, we're drinking this one. We're drinking the Pierre Angulaire Bordeaux Blanc 2018. And this is a combination of uh, a 75% Sauvignon Blanc, 15% Semillon, and a 10% Muscadel. That's what this one is. And it's actually quite good, for, uh, especially for white wine. I'm, you know, as many of you know, I'm not a white wine drinker per se. But uh, this was an, actually a very good recommendation. And I do take recommendations and uh, a good deal of time. <clears throat> they turn out to be very good recommendations. I have had a couple of misses, like I said. Been a couple of them that uh, there's a uh, there's a Cabernet in the back that uh, I didn't really particularly care for, and, and uh, there were a couple of others. There was an oak, uh, there was an, another one, a very oaky wine that uh, I didn't really care for. But um, <clears throat> most of the time, by, I'd say about ninety percent of the time, the recommendations are very good, and uh, and and I do enjoy them. Uh, let's see. Uh, Amkar, uh, Amitkar 15 says, Drunking is water, Rick. <laughs> Let's see. And uh, and Devil Jen says, Say a boost comment, il la bute. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't you know we're all French here? Your passion for wine is worldwide. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I, 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 I oh no, I know. I, French wine. Look, it, they're wines from. I love wines from all over the world, and uh, I, the the thing about French wines, France. That's that's their that's their key export, really. In in, in a way, is is wine. That's what they're known for. That's their staple, and um, you know, I, I love the French, and I love good French wines. And I'm a little concerned about the French wine industry right now because, as a lot of the uh, vendors are, about where things have been kind of going with the with the wine industry in France, and um, they're they're taking uh, in, in France a lot of the, um, uh, the vendors are are uh, they're having to struggle a little bit with a lot of competition, not so much from other places like. You know Australia. I mean, everybody makes wine. You know, we we have our uh, our wines in the States, and and of course Australia and, and New Zealand. New Zealand uh, has been making uh, some really fine wines, and um, some of the uh, some of the countries that I mentioned earlier, Chile and and uh, uh, Argentina and and, and, and or, or uh, uh, down in South America and some of those states, uh, some of those countries. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, and the wine started to kick in a little bit, yeah, because uh, <laughs> I'm down halfway in the bottle. It's, uh, it's starting to kick in a little bit. It's only 12% alcohol, by the way. But um, the thing is about uh, the French, I mean, when you think of wine, you know, that's your, the first thing that comes to your mind. Now, I'm Italian, so I have Italian blood in me. But Italy and France have a long history together, you know, more or less. And some has been contentious, but a long history together. So when you think wine, you're usually thinking of things, you're either thinking of Italian wines, which I think of a lot, or French wines. That's a lot of the time. That's where, where the focus is there. And so uh, the French are very proud of their wines, and rightly so, because it makes some really fine wines. But they're getting a lot of competition, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of dirty stuff going on down there that, that uh, is cause for concern and that, uh, that concerns a lot of, of uh, the French vineyards. Uh, they're, they're a little, a little uh, concerned about. Uh, some of that is coming from China, by the way. Uh, the Chinese have, been, uh, have decided they're getting into the wine business, and they've been doing that for a few years. Uh, I have not tried a Chinese wine uh, yet, okay, and I'm not putting that China uh, per se, but um, they've been they've been uh, really trying to to kind of shake up the wine market a little bit. So it's going to be the next couple, few years going to be interesting to watch um, uh, globally, uh, particularly with France. Uh, Laudic is in the chat. Laudic's good to see you. Laudic says French are the best, except Rick, who is better than everybody. I don't, I lay no claim to that. I appreciate it, Laudic, but uh, please, I, I have no claim to that. I am, uh, I don't consider myself any better than anybody else. And you know what? I, I have my, my foibles, my, my faults for sure. Um, a lot of Gallinette, uh, Michael says, you recycle the bottles you drink? 
You know what? I kind of, in a way, I do. They're sitting right up there. <laughs> uh, well, those are the ones that I drink on the show. Okay, those are the. This is our seventy-first episode of Drink with Rick, and this uh, this is the seventy, actually the seventy-second bottle of wine that I've opened on the show uh, because I opened two on one episode. And uh, one was basically an eggnog wine, which was very, very interesting. I, I liked it, as a matter of fact. But uh, yeah, seventy-one bottles. Uh, hoping to hit the hundred dollar, uh, the hundred dollar, <laughs> the hundred bottle mark at some point here. So uh, yeah, the wine's actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, wine's great. Uh, uh, Zohar uh, sixty-eight to sixty says you've already been to France. Um, no, not not yet. Never been to France. Um, but uh, it would be a nice, I would enjoy going to France. I would enjoy doing a tour of Italy and France sometime. Um, I'm a kind of person, I don't like to fly. I'm not very good on planes, so it's kind of tough to, for me to get out uh, to, to Europe uh, and to, to most of the countries that are not on the on the. Uh, uh, North American co uh, you know in North America uh, I still have a lot of states I I haven't seen uh, within my own country and I'd like to see those but yeah you know I really would secretly I really would like to visit uh, Europe I'd like to visit uh, Italy and uh, France I'd like to visit uh, Spain I think it would be it would be kind of fun to go in those areas uh, I'd like to uh, visit Germany a little bit but uh, you know, a, a lot of uh, countries in Europe. I like to go. I like to check out um, uh, a lot of places in Italy that I've heard so much about. That my parent, my dad has told me so much about. And then my brother, my brother Mike, uh, who who's been to Italy a couple of times, and uh, my my uh, grandparents came from Italy. As a matter of fact, we came from northern Italy, hence the name Savoia. I'm uh, uh, Savoia, and. Uh, that's uh, so. There's a lot of my heritage there. I'd kind of like to go up there and and, and check out sometime. But it, it's gonna have to wait till after this pandemic is over for sure. Because uh, of course we're not really going anywhere at the moment, are we? Uh, Ross Alive says, "Do you think there's still wines made as in ancient times?" Um, I think that the closest, I think the closest that comes to is um, is probably a bottle of wine sort of like this, one that's made organically, because I, I think in, in in ancient times, biblical times, all that, that's really how they, you know, they, they really weren't, Monsanto didn't exist at that time, <laughs> so they weren't, they weren't making all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't really want to go there, but uh, I, I do believe that uh, wines were made a lot more organically than they are now. I think most wines now that are made are um, really more manufactured, I would say. A lot of them are, for lack of a better word at the moment, more manufactured. And when I'm talking about the, the fermentation process of the wine, not the growing of the grapes, obviously. But um, th that's why I wanted to try out some of the more, uh, the more um, organically uh grown and processed uh, and, and uh, vented wines because well, first of all the organic wines I've talked about this on the show many times before uh, the alcohol content in these wines uh, they're generally the ones that are posted on uh, on the uh, on the label are not necessarily what you actually get you they're usually a lot higher and in the, the Americas in the, in the states particularly they are considerably higher because uh, a lot of Americans, they found from market research that a lot of Americans prefer uh, wines with higher alcohol content. So what they do is a lot of them try to push in the extra sulfites and, you know, the added sulfites and things like that <clears throat> on, on top of what occurs naturally to try to up that alcohol content. And um, that I don't think that's necessarily good for people. I've also heard that that is probably one of the reasons why um, uh, a lot of people who drink red wines will wind up with the headache, the wine headache, uh, that's notorious from some red wines. And the headache isn't necessarily caused by it being a red wine per se. It's really caused more because of the added sulfites and the, and the higher alcohol content that's really affecting, that's really affecting, uh, uh, the person who drinks the, the red wine. And, um, 
And that's why some people switch to white wines because they say, well, I can't handle the, the um, high alcohol content or I can't handle the headaches that the red wines give me, so I switch to the white wines. Because generally, generally speaking, a lot of the white wines will have a, a slightly lower alcohol content. Not always, though. But um, in this case, I think that an organically grown and fermented wine is probably a better bet if you're having if you're suffering from those headaches. Um, so uh, I didn't want to go too far in the weeds on that, but uh, <laughs> just in a nutshell, that that kind of answers that. Tommy Antio says, "When uh, yeah, when are we going to take that month long trip to Italy?" <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's going to be a while, I think. Um, Let's see. Uh, uh, let me try. I'm trying to keep up with what we got here. Uh, Beba, is it Beba Bell Blue? Uh, Beba Blues. I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry. Beba Bell Blues. <laughs> I think I said it right there. Did I? We still have organic wine in France. Even some wines that are still made with original processing. And I'm really glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. I would like to see more of that. The thing is that the demand for wine is going up considerably, and as it has gone up, it has become, um, you know, a lot of vintners are really scrambling to to meet that demand. So uh, because of that, their production uh, the methods are such that, that it's really more mass production than anything else. Now, there are a lot of vintners that, that, uh, that don't like that, that resist that, and that, that, continue, that, that prefer to do uh, winemaking the traditional way. And a lot of those are in France, by the way. But uh, there is a lot of pressure, once again, because, uh, because the demand has gone up. And especially during this pandemic, I said pandemic. I had, do I have to take a sip every time I say pandemic? Uh, I'm not going to play that drinking game tonight. No, I'll lose that one big time. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to open a second bottle for that. Maybe a third. Uh, but due to the pandemic, of course, uh, there are finding, statistically speaking, that there um, that the cases of uh, of alcoholism <laughs> has gone up. The cases of alcohol that are being sold uh, have gone up. <clears throat> The number of cases, I should say. I was trying to make a pun there. Um, so, yeah, the, the demand for alcohol is considerably higher right now than it was even seven months ago. So the demand for wines has gone up. So the, what that means is that that they're really, really having to, to keep production up as well to satisfy or to satiate that demand. So that's... And that's kind of what we're dealing with here in the wine industry, uh, somewhat. Lodic says, I think we should go uh, a partnership together. It would be the Lauric Live. <laughs> the Luric. Is it Luric or uh, Lauric or Lu uh, Lauric Live? <laughs> right, I'll drink to that. Uh, Beba Belbelus says, Venice is incredible. You'd love it. You know, Venice is one of those places I always want to see because just because. Uh, the, the, the whole concept of uh, basically a, a city uh, uh, on the water. It's just, I mean, the whole concept. Now, the thing with Venice is uh, they, they had some issues there with, uh, I think they had some flooding and they had uh, some other issues there recently. But uh, I think Venice is an amazing town. It's an amazing city. I mean, just, just the, uh, I don't know. Just the fact that you have a city like that is is pretty amazing. Uh, it really is, and and I'd like to go visit it sometime. Just because I, I don't think there's any other city like that on on, on the planet. I, I don't think uh, as Venice, and um, it's just a very 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 unique, very unique place to visit. And I'd like to see how they how a, a lot of of people live in in, in a city like that. Um, I don't know that I, I don't know that I could live there uh, per se. I, I prefer being high and dry and you know just kind of, uh, but, uh, but and, and and I like a little bit of space there. But uh, but uh, I think it's just an amazing amazing city. Um, let's see what. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm losing the chat here. No, it scrolled down without me. Uh, Bebe Blue says in French we say a blanc de blanc rouge. Is it rouge? 
Ren Nebush, Roush, Sir de Blanc, Ta okay, I, I, don't, I can't think I can read all that, but uh, which means white after red, all is good, red after white, headache is coming. Wow, that's interesting. I did not know that. I've got to, I've got to, I'm going to have to, 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 to um, i got to capture that. Red, white after red, all is good. Red after white, headache is coming. Yes, you know, actually, I think I've heard something like that before, and not in exactly in that phrasing, but uh, yeah. Yeah, um, and a, a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people switch to white wines for that reason. Let me check uh, in Facebook for just a moment, and uh, let's see, it's kind of, kind of quiet on Facebook right now. It looks like all the action is happening on Twitch at the moment. And uh, what else we got going on here? Killian8833 says, Good night, everyone. Uh, see you soon. Merci de uh, me voir. Fait de couvert la chaîne. I, you know what? I took a year of spin. I appreciate it. I really do. I took a year of, of French in high school. And uh, the only thing I remember about uh, taking French in high school, and I had, think I mentioned this story before, uh, were the girls because I was one of three guys in the class, in French class, and uh, when the class started, and uh, by the time it, we got to about the middle of the first semester, I was the only guy there, and it, they're all the rest were girls, and uh, it was. Uh, I enjoyed French class. I really I enjoyed French class. I didn't. I don't remember a lot from French class about about the French language, but I. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed French class. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Mod somebody said, uh, "Yeah, Killing eighty uh, three thirty. Good night, and uh, have a great have a great weekend. Have a great what, rest of the weekend. I'm glad you're here with us tonight." La Gallionette de Michael says, "Congratulations for your French accent. Oh, it's horrible. Come on, <laughs> it's horrible." I'll tell you something real briefly. I know I'm going over though, but I, I, uh, I'll tell you something about uh, uh, French. And then that's one thing I am grateful for taking a year of French in high school is that I can read it. I can pretty much understand what I'm reading. I just can't speak it very well. Um, I can understand a lot of what I'm reading. Not not all of it, but a lot of it. Uh, I can I can figure it out. But uh, it really came in handy. When this was years ago, when I had my computer store in Orlando, in in uh, Altamont Springs, and I remember uh, in my store one day, um, a gentleman came in, a very tall gentleman, and he was clearly French. He he's a, a really nice guy, uh, and and um, he he came in and he said that he 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 wanted to utilize my services to um, to set up. He just bought a business. Uh, down down the street, and he needed someone, uh, an IT person, to set up his computer system and to, to set him up for for uh, business there. And I kind of resisted it a little bit at first because I was already, I already had a lot going on, and I couldn't necessarily leave my store because I was the only per at the time I was the only person in the store, um, and I couldn't uh, necessarily do any. Uh, on-site work very much because it means it meant I had to lock down the store and go off and do it and the store would be closed and then, and then people would be coming to me saying hey where is this guy he's not open so I kind of resisted that at first but he kept coming in and he kept telling me he says no I want you I, and, and it's really strange how that worked out he 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 said no I want you to work on my my systems and I really didn't understand exactly why and the wherefores of it but uh, when I went to his, I went to his home first and and uh, worked on his his family's computers, and uh, he had a Windows, but they were all French versions of Windows, uh, of Microsoft Windows, they were all in French, and um, and then it it kind of hit me uh, why he chose me one because my last name Savoya Savoy. Um, uh, it, it you know the the, the history of of, of Savoya. And, and I'm not going to go into that now because I, I really don't have time to do that tonight, but, but maybe another time. But um, he picked up on that. And uh, the second thing that he picked on uh, picked up on was uh, the fact that I was uh, nearby where he was and, and uh, no one else could understand what uh, he was, what, what was on his computers because everything was in French. 
So I said, well, I, I'm, not really, I'm not really that adept at French either, but I'll do the best I can. So I went there, and of course, knowing Windows, knowing how Windows works and, and being familiar with the English version of it, um, I picked up very quickly uh, where, you know, what the French translation was on a lot of those things, because basically it's just the French version of a lot of the commands and things in Windows and, and a lot of the instructions and a lot of the error message and th messages and that sort of thing. So it, it wasn't that hard to do. Uh, but then when I went to start setting up his, his network and everything, there was a lot more French involved in, in some aspects of it. And, I, and, and I, I, I had to draw on my year of French class trying to pick up a lot of the, the, uh, the, uh, the words and the phrases and things like that. But I, I, I did it. I did it. And he seemed very, very happy with my work. He seemed very, very happy with it. And, uh, and now he sold the business, and I think he moved. Uh, I can't remember where he moved. He came from France. He brought his whole family down from France to to buy this business, and invest in it. And he did it for a couple of years, and then he moved. I think he moved down to South Florida with his family. But uh, he th he thanked me, and and um, I I was just kind of floored that he really um, valued my service as much as I did, as much as I struggled through all of that. Uh, but he was a really really great guy, and. Um, but he was very insistent that I work on his computers, that I'm be the one to do that. And uh, I think a lot of it had to do with my name. But uh, I'll just say that, that uh, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And I, and I miss him. He's a really nice guy. Um, let's see. Uh, a lot of says, can you talk to us some more about your career, Rick? Well, uh, well I, <laughs> I don't want to bore you with my career. I'd like to learn more about what you guys are doing. Um, uh, Beba Blue says, we French people love to have close partners so we can argue with them when we're upset. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's true of Americans, too, actually. <laughs> Some Americans. Uh, Mike87, Mike is in the chat. Good to see you. He says, good night, Rick. Uh, good tasting. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And I appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you very much. Here's to Mike. I gave you a toast. Um. There, there are a couple of the things I wanted to, to touch on real quick. Bear with me just real quick because this is, uh, for those of you who know me uh, uh, pretty well, you know that uh, I'm really big on uh, weather stuff. I'm, uh, I'm a ham radio operator. I'm also a GMRS radio operator, and I, I'm really, really big on, on uh, weather preparedness and things like that. And, of course, we had, uh, I can't even pronounce this, 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 thing that came through this tropical storm, this hurricane tropical storm that whizzed by us here last week and hit some places pretty hard, actually, on the way. I thought it was Isaiah's. It's actually, is, uh, is the, is the, I, I can't pronounce it. Is, is the ice? I, I don't know. Anyway, this thing came through. I don't know where these weather people get these names. Um Anyway, it came through, and uh, there was some some damage to, to some areas. But I want to say, look, this, and they're saying that it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse before it gets better. And, of course, I've seen some of the storms coming from Florida. I've seen some of these storms hit the day before or the week before um, the the end of the hurricane season, and we're well from we're well away from the end of hurricane season. That doesn't end till till the end of, uh, till November, so uh, we're right in the thick of it. So please, 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 if you can, get prepared. Go to ready.gov. Prepare yourself. Put together an emergency weather kit, and um, you know, of course, the items on the kit also include a weather radio. Please get a weather radio now. For full disclosure, I work for bytwowayradios.com. That's my day job, and uh, and you can get a weather radio from there. My boss has authorized me to give you, to uh, give you a discount. A uh, there's there's a special promo code just for this show. It's called Wine Show. The the uh, discount code is Wine Show. W i n e s h o w. That's W i n e s h o w. If you go there to uh, buy two way radios, you can pick up. A weather radio of your choice, or actually anything. It's, it's good for anything on the site. And you can save five percent off your order. That's a big five percent off your order um, for uh, buying any kind of a, a radio or radio accessories um, on at, at buytwowayradios.com. Wine Show is the the um, is the promo code. 
to use. Now, for full disclosure, once again, I work for Buy Two Way Radios. I am the product manager for the company, which means that I'm doing this, but I'm not making any extra money doing this. Okay, so it's not it's not like I'm I'm uh, I'm not making any money off uh, giving out promo code. This is not technically an ad. Okay, so it's. Uh, I'm doing this whole show. I finance myself. <laughs> I'm making many things off this show. Okay, I'm doing this for fun. I'd love to. Would I love to? Yes, I would love to be. Uh, wouldn't that? Would be that would be the ultimate dream, right? To to have a um, a wine show and just be getting paid for drinking wine and talking about it. That's. Uh, I'm not a sommelier. I'm just an everyman. But uh, you know what? That that is uh, got to be the ultimate dream to be able to just sit here and drink wine on a Saturday night with my friends um, online and just uh, and, and get paid for it. That would be great. I'd love that. But the reality is, it's not happening right now. Okay? Maybe someday. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But right now, I'm just doing it for fun, and, 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 and this is just something I enjoy doing, and then I enjoy spending the time with you. And I've explained the reasons why I do it. Uh, in the past because uh, I want, you know, these times are some troubling times out there and uh, th I see so much strife and so much tension and everything like that. And that's why we don't talk about politics or religion on this show. It's just not something we do. What we do do is we try to, uh, I, I try to just bring people together and just have, sit back on a Saturday night. I don't care what your politics are. I don't care where, what your religion is. I don't care where you come from. It's, it's, we're just sitting back having a good time, just enjoying ourselves and having a good time with wine. And somebody told me not too long ago, they said that, you know, wine is the ultimate uh, unifier that brings people together. There, there are a lot of things that can tear people apart, but there's one thing that can bring, bring people together, and that is a good wine. And that's what I'm trying, that's my aim here on this show, is just let's sit back, enjoy good wine. And it is, it is a good unifier for people. So, look, uh, uh, th that's what that's what I'm doing. That's I'm just having a great time. Just uh, drinking wine, kicking back, and talking to my friends. Uh, Bebe Blue says, uh, "Ooh, Dewalt, I'm more into Ryobi, but Dewalt will fit." Yeah, DeWalt, That's actually a brand of FRS Radio. Uh, those are job site radios there on on the website. Uh, actually, what it was it was intending to to show was my, and this is actually what I have. Um, I have a bunch of radios. I actually have them right here, and you show pictures of them. But this is a, this is a, a, a weather radio that I use personally, and um, I keep it on my desk. As a matter of fact, we've used it quite a bit. It's, this is the radio is almost twelve years old, and it's uh, or eleven years old, something like that. It's 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 old, but it still works great, and it's come in really handy when we've had uh, storms and and uh, and um, uh, blackouts and things like that. And we carry we we actually take it with us when we go on trips and stuff. That and a couple of others. Where there's a, a WR310 by Midland also that uh, is a weather radio. It's a combination weather crank, hand crank, and radio and uh, emergency beacon and a light and that sort of thing. And that one even has a dog whistle in it. Can you believe that? Now, my bosses think the, the dog whistle... <laughs> My bosses think the dog whistle is silly, but um, but I explained to them why the dog whistle is there. Let's say, for instance, if you get stuck somewhere, and this actually happened. This was a true story. Um, about this time last year, we had, uh, uh, and it actually happened down uh, just a few miles down from our house. Um, there was uh, there was a doctor and his wife. They lived in a really really nice house down there. And uh, they, uh, the house blew up uh, one morning. The house just blew up because of a gas leak. They had a gas leak in the house. And they just exploded. And it just blew. I mean, there was nothing left of this house. And both of them were at home at the time. And um, he survived. She did not. His, his wife did not survive the blast. But he survived the blast. But he was stuck under the rubble. And there was so much rubble that they couldn't find him. They went out there looking for him, and they had a difficult time finding him. He had a cell phone on, but it wasn't uh, working very well. They, they finally found, they, they just looked out, they had dogs out there. They had dogs out there hunting for him, trying to find him. And they knew he was, they, they knew he was under there, and they thought he was still alive based on his last tweet, or his last uh, text and stuff. Because um, he did, was able to dial 911, I, I guess. But, um, 
they couldn't find him because it was just it was just the destruction was so massive. But it turns out they did find him. He did survive, and he was buried under that rubble in one section that that uh, the dogs found him. Now here's the thing: um, with a that's one of the reasons why this weather radio has a dog whistle. Let's say, for instance, something like that happens, and you can activate the dog whistle and what it is a high-pitched sound that the dogs can hear that helps them hone in. Let's say, for instance, like in an avalanche or something like that, and they can't find you because you're buried under that. The dogs can help, it'll help the dogs locate you so they can find you in time and dig you out. Um, but that's what that's for. That's what that's for. Now, I, I hopefully I'll never need the dog whistle. <laughs> hopefully I'll never need that. But, but uh, once um, I explained the usefulness of that and why that was there, it made more sense. Um, because otherwise, why would you need a dog whistle on a radio? And anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, FTLXG33 says, Good night, Rick. Et bon uh, nuit et toi. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for joining me here on the chat tonight. Uh, I do appreciate your being here. So uh, the couple of things I want to get to, because I didn't want it to go too late, because we're going to have to, to wrap it up here soon. I did promise my wife I'd end early tonight. But <laughs> as we all know, that, that hardly ever happens. Let me check Facebook real quick. Uh, Gordon's in the chat, and Gordon says, Hi, Rick. Hi, right back at you, Gordon. I hope you're doing well. I hope everything is going well for you. And uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, tell me how you're doing. I have a couple other notes here. What was it? Oh, yeah, we were going to do a summary on the wine. Oh, I remember what it was now. I was going to explain, I was going to tell you a little bit about uh, my experience at the post office. Now, uh, if you, Victor, if you're in the chat right now, and Victor, I don't know if you're uh, uh, catching it right now live, but uh, I did send my, uh, as you all know, I do send out these, uh, my, uh, uh, what are these things? <laughs> Too much wine. Uh, I do send out these coasters. I have some really nice drink with Rick coasters here that I send out occasionally. And, uh, and Victor was, um, he contacted me, he emailed me, and he, he sent me a really nice email sometime back. So I sent, I said, look, I, Victor, I want to send you some nice coasters. So he said, great, and I'll send you a, a bottle of wine to review. And I said, that's just perfect. The problem is, is getting out, it was getting out to the post office to mail the coasters. And it's not a big package, it's just a little package. But the challenge for me was actually getting out to the post office. And I actually was late getting them out because I thought, well, I'll send them out as soon as possible. It took me a week or so. Hopefully, Victor, I, I hope you understand. I, I'm sorry if, 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 uh, if I was late with that. Um, they're on their way, by the way. The coasters are on on their way, and they should be, you should be getting them very, very shortly. But... Um, I went to the post office, and I've done this a couple of times already. Um, I've tried to go to the post office a few times and then bailed because the line, you know, or, or my wife did actually, she, she would go there and, to try to mail some stuff, and she'd bail because the line there was just way too long uh, because of all the social distancing rules and everything. But um, I, did, I did this uh, about a month or two ago. I went there myself and said, I've got to mail some stuff out. And I, I was, one of the things I was going to ship out were some films that I shot way back when that I want to show in, uh, in the future to you all, some films that I made back when I was younger. And uh, they had to be transferred to video, so I, I had to um, ship them out. But I went to the post office, and uh, and also had some coasters for, for folks and, and, and a book. I had, I had your book there, as a matter of fact, uh, that I shipped to you. And uh, I sat in that line for, for well over an hour, and uh, the thing was that kind of concerned me was that, you know, I, I went in wearing my mask and the whole bit, right? So we're supposed to be doing the social distancing thing, and they've got all the floor marked out for, for, you know, six feet apart and that sort of thing. But the way this post office is laid out, um, they didn't really con they didn't really they didn't really plan on so many people being in there. And when you're spaced out, you know, basically that's... Uh, you know, it's funny when you're when you're a small group of people, like five or six people, and you're close together, it doesn't take up that much room. But when you're spaced out, it takes a lot more room. And that's post office did not have it. In addition to that, what happened was the post office, the, the line would go around and double back on itself well within that six-foot area, that six-foot radius area. 
So it's a little concerning going in there because you go wind up going into this line and you're this looping around and you're winding up facing somebody who's going, you know, who's back in the back of the line waiting for for your part of the line to go through. And uh, it gets really convoluted in there because people are just kind of sort of organically trying to figure out how to, to, to move this line around. Because there's nobody in the post office that's watching this. Nobody's monitoring this. Nobody's standing at the door saying, okay, well, you can go in now because we're down to so many people and you can go in. Or no, no, you have to stay outside for a few minutes because we've got too many people in the building breathing in all that air in a really confined space, even though they're six feet, of, supposed to be six feet apart. So uh, it was a little nerve-wracking being in there. And then you've got some people that are really not wearing their mask properly. You know, they're, they're wearing it down down here or, or uh, and their, their nose is exposed. And they're breathing in and out through their nose, which doesn't help any. What's the point of having a mask on if you're, if you're not going to cover your mouth and your nose, right? And um, th then there are other people that really didn't have masks. And there was one guy walking around like this. The whole time, he was there for an hour, and he's walking around like this. Like, that's, I don't know. Anyway, so, because he didn't have a mask. Uh, so, um, so I was in there the first time, and it was just, uh, it was a little nerve-wracking. took a long time to get there and, uh, and, and get through it. But I, I got through it. So, this time around, I went there to mail I was I thought I was going to mail this, but it took me a, a few days because I knew the lines were long, so... Uh, I I didn't I couldn't go there for some days because because of the social distancing issues there at the post office it just really wasn't feasible for me to go it wasn't wasn't a good idea so I had to wait and I had to wait and I had to wait well the other uh, the, the other day I, I said you know I can't wait any longer because poor Victor's waiting for his for his uh, for his um, coaster so i said oh i'm gonna have i'm just gonna go, have to go do it so i get and then once again i had to stand in line for an hour or so while people and this time i had a lady in front of me coughing and hacking and you know, all that kind of stuff it was really freaky uh but anyway so so i get and, and, and i was there for i was standing in this line for a long time and the line wasn't moving and in the meantime more and more people were piling into this this small area and just filling up this small area, and nobody was, you're trying to social distance, but there were so many people in there, it was almost impossible to do. And they're all, and nobody's watching this door. Once again, nobody's monitoring any of this at the U.S. Post Office. And I was getting a little agitated. I was not the only one. There are a few people getting agitated. Like, nobody's monitoring this. Nobody's paying attention to, to this. Nobody's doing anything about this. Said, Where is everybody? And the line wasn't moving at all. <clears throat> So finally, I got up to where I could actually see what's going on, and then my demeanor completely changed. It uh, it, it it went from uh, annoyance and, and slight agitation, and, and just like why, what is going on here? Uh, all of a sudden, to to just sudden, I I, I had sudden compassion for the people the poor people working behind the counter because when i looked behind the counter there were two people behind the counter this place was severely understaffed two people behind the counter one person looked like she hadn't had a break in two days <laughs> you know, seriously she looked like she'd been working there for two days without a break and uh she was just uh, you, you could tell she was just frazzled and the other guy it was his shift was over and they were and, and, and his boss was telling him he was supposed to be leaving, and but yet he couldn't bear to leave because of all the line, and he didn't want to leave the other lady by herself. He felt really bad for her. And uh, when I got up there, you know, I, I gave him kudos for that because uh, I, I said, you guys, you guys are doing a heck of a job under circumstances. And uh, But the thing is, is that... Here he is. Here it is. That the I came home that evening and and I'm watching the news and they're talking about how the U.S. Post Office is like ten billion dollars in the hole and and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. Um, it seems to me this could be managed better somehow. It could be managed better. Somebody needs to be in there, kind of saying, well, let's let's fix this, you know. But. Um, I, I feel really bad for the folks at the USPS who are having to, to deal with this 
and I can understand now why um, why it's it's such a tough situation because they're, they're very they're severely understaffed and um, and yet they're having to try to set these protocols that the government set in motion to 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 do all this at least in our area to set the social distancing rules and they're not being followed uh, they're not being followed because there's nobody there who can enforce it then nobody can so I, I think given all that I, I, it is, it's a heck of a situation it, it really is um, and for that reason I'm thinking about I'm thinking about maybe trying to instead of going to the post office of the future for mailing these things maybe just trying to uh, Maybe trying to set up my own postal thing here, just trying to do something. You know, not, the stamps.com, they can only do so much. But maybe doing some things here where I can set up some kind of uh, postal pickup and my own postal processing. I've done it in the past. I did it when I had my computer store way back in the day. I used to do that. Um, I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe it makes more sense for me to do it here. It might, But I don't have the money to do all that stuff, so... Uh, it's a catch-22, really is. But I feel really, I, I, you know what, I think at this point I want to make a special toast to the poor people who work at my local USPS facility here in Charlotte. Uh, to them, I just want to say, uh, you know, I, I, I feel for you, and um, I appreciate the, the work you uh, put into it. And uh, I understand that this is not... A situation of your making and you're having to make the best of it and deal with it and uh, I just want to say here's to you here's to you and hopefully hopefully this pandemic will will end soon and we can all got, kind of get to some sort of normalcy in our lives right anyway that was my rant for the night um, uh, Let's see, who else we got going on here? In uh, uh, Blue says, 100 viewers is a peak. Hopefully it will get you explaining why you're late to your wife. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, we're, we're known as Ricky and Lucy, right? My, my wife, her, her full name is Lucila. We're known as Ricky and Lucy. And, uh, you know, the, in, in, the, the thing is, it's kind of a role reversal here. Instead of a... Uh, uh, Lucy, you'll have some splaining to do. It's more like Ricky, you have some splaining to do. <laughs> so I've got to, I've got to mind my wife here and, and uh, end this here shortly. Uh, thanks for reminding me, by the way. There is one more story that I did, I did promise I wanted to relay to you all, and that is uh, the, uh, the, the 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 fact that my wife she made that earlier reference to 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 roadkill. <laughs> My uh, wife, she is a wonderful person. She's very long-suffering, and she's put up with a lot of my crazy projects and ideas and business things and everything else. And um, she is a heck of a she's a heck of a person. She just she's she's been a real trooper, and she does so much for us, so much for us. I don't do enough for her. I really don't. And uh, and she reminds me of that too sometimes, but. <laughs> Uh, but yes, I don't. She is the love of my life, and she is also just an amazing person. Now, one of the things she does is she's really amazing at. Uh, at she's an amazing cook. She's an amazing chef. And here's a, the 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 story I was going to relay about my wife earlier. And I learned this about her very early on. She is the type of person. Now, I'm the type of person where I open the refrigerator and I'm going to make something. I can cook some things. I can cook a few things. But the thing is, with the difference between me and my wife is that I have to, everything has to be there. You know, if I open the refrigerator and all the ingredients are there and I can make what I'm going to make. But if all the ingredients aren't there, it's like, oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. Uh, I'm done. Uh, I can't make that. Uh, that's, that's it. Uh, that's no way that's happening. I'm going to have to do something else. But my wife, she is something who, uh, who just, it just amazes me how she can do this. She is the type of person who you, you can open the refrigerator door and you can find just like, like half a tomato and half a potato and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And she can look into that fridge and she can see a meal there. And she can take it and whip up something, an amazing dish. 
That's just that's just something amazing. I don't know how she does it. I really don't. I never understood it. Um, but she has such a creative mind for that sort of thing that she can take just a few ingredients and just make a really nice meal out of it. And it just, uh, it's always impressed me. It's something that's always impressed me about her. And uh, I, I, it's just, uh, now she has a cookbook she's supposed to be doing, but uh, all this stuff is in her head. But uh, we keep telling her, you know, you gotta, you got to come up and you got to write, make up a cookbook for all this stuff. But I've never seen anybody do that before, the way they can just come and open the fridge and there can be like three items in the refrigerator, four items, and then she can make a nice meal out of it. I can't do that. I open the refrigerator, I see four items there that are completely unrelated to anything I want. And I'm like, uh, okay, I guess I'm driving to McDonald's. <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's me. <laughs> but um, I, I'm really, really thankful for my wife. She's just uh, amazing. Uh, Paulo TV says, Rick, Lodic would love to receive a coaster, but he is too shy. <laughs> and uh, he says, uh, in... in uh, a lot of says, I would love to see your wife on stream with you on one day, just a cameo. Maybe one of these days. Maybe we'll, You know what? I was thinking that maybe she should do her own cooking show. And uh, we, we have Drink with Rick, and she could have uh, Cook with Chi. Cook with Chi. That, that would be great. I, I would love that. She's not up to that right now. But maybe one of these days, maybe one of these days I can I can turn around on that, and she can uh, she do it. Because I think she'd do an amazing job. I think she'd just be amazing at that. Anyway, the... Um, so, so Lodic, you, you want, uh, I didn't send you any, uh, any coasters. I've got the coasters I can send you. I'll tell you what, Lodic, if you uh, send me a, uh, email me uh, right here, rick at savoyamedia.com. Just email me uh, in uh, a shipping address, and I'll send you a pair of coasters. I'll send you a pair of coasters right there. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get those out to you. Now, uh, it might be a little while before I can get them out to you because i got to be able to m maneuver through the post office uh, stuff. But, uh, but, but, but I can get them out to you. Just an email. And I don't do anything with anybody's email, with anybody's addresses, okay? I don't do anything with your shipping addresses or anything like that. It's just to ship this stuff out, and, and that's, that's it. Um, so your, your, your privacy is, is uh, safe with me, Okay. Anyway, I, I think we're getting on towards the end of the show. And uh, I, uh, before I do that, I want to do a summary, a quick summary of the wine review. Once again, we've been drinking the Pierre Angulaire. This is a Bordeaux Blanc. This is a 2018 Bordeaux Blanc. 75% Sauvignon Blanc, 15% Sauvignon. Or if you're, uh, in, uh, if you're from... Uh, Australia, it would be uh, Semillon. 10% Muscadel. One of these days we've got to do a, a thing on the Muscadel grape. That can be a lot of fun. And uh, this is actually a pretty decent wine. I'll, I'll tell you what I tasted in this wine. I tasted, uh, I, I, I tasted mostly apple and some lime and uh, uh, there, there was uh, pineapple in it. But uh, I, later on, as I got down into it, I tasted a little bit of pear as well. So uh, there's a little bit of a pear taste. Um, so that, that was very interesting. It's, um, I have to say, it's not very tan. Well, it's not very acidic. It's, it's, it's not, I don't think it's tannic much, but it, it is not really. I don't really taste any tannins in it. But it's... Um, it's fairly dry. It's a fairly dry. It actually is drier than I expected it to be. I thought it might be a little bit sweeter than this, but it's not. It's actually very dry, uh, very good. It's um, not that acidic. Uh, so if you're not, if you don't want an acidic a wine that's 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 high in acidity, this is this is not it. This is a, actually pretty pretty mild. Uh, and uh, it's a fairly bold. It, it starts off bold, but then the finish is it has kind of a light finish. So um, it, it, it doesn't really have a really strong finish to it. And if you like a wine with a really strong finish, this is not it, okay, because this is not really that type of wine. But it's, it starts off with a bold flavor, just kind of trails off uh, at the end. But it's, it's actually pretty decent wine. I like it. I like it. it as white wines go, and, and there have been a few white wines that I, I actually have uh, liked, 
The Latour, the Latour Chardonnay, I actually liked. It was really ni nice and buttery, and I really enjoyed that one. Um, <clears throat> the Mont Grave was, was actually a rosé. I wouldn't call it a white wine. It was actually a rosé. That was actually pretty good, too. I, I, I really liked that one. But this, uh, this Bordeaux Blanc is, um, is actually uh, pretty good, and I would do it again, especially because this is a um, allegedly, and, uh, I, and for all intents and purposes, I believe it is, uh, an organic wine, uh, organically grown and organically uh, fermented. So, and because only 12% alcohol by volume, and that lower alcohol content is a pretty good indication that it was organically fermented. Uh, and I, th I think that uh, it's a it actually tastes very well, but it, it it's... Uh, it actually worked pretty well with the turkey. I think it goes well with, this would go well with fish. I think this would go well with a, a nice fish dinner, uh, especially if it's like a fish fillet or something like that. You got a white fish or a, or a, or a salmon or, so, or something like that. It, it would go pretty well with that. It, um, it went pretty well with this turkey that we had. Uh, I tried it with the turkey. I rather enjoyed it with, with uh, uh, the turkey and the Gruyere cheese. Now, the thing is about the Gruyere um, cheese is that uh, it turns out we tried it on a cracker with the turkey and the combination because Gruyere is, is somewhat close to a, kind of a Swiss-tasting uh, Swiss cheese. And uh, this would go good with the Swiss cheese, by the way. And the combination was really good with this wine. I really enjoyed it. It was just kind of an impromptu thing I tried. Um, and, of course, as always, uh, this it, it was a winner with the uh, Trader Joe's double cream Gouda cheese from Trader Joe's. I rather like that. Uh, we haven't had a we haven't had a miss yet on that, and uh, I rather enjoyed it. But um, this is actually a pretty decent wine. Fourteen ninety nine is what I paid for, it, and I purchased it at Sunset and Vine in uh, Blowing Rock, North Carolina. That's up in in uh, Blowing Rock Boone area, up in the mountains. And uh, in, in the uh, hills of, uh, of North Carolina, not too far from Appalachian State College, where my son will be going to uh, shortly. And uh, well, I'll be talking about more of that, uh, more of that next week. <laughs> A very bittersweet type of uh, situation for me. Anyway, the, um, the Sunset Vine, really nice people. Talk to if they go there. Ask for Bennett. He'll he'll take good care of you. Uh, that I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, their their operation there at uh, Sunset and Vine. Kind of a small, not a real big place, but it's it's uh, it's very nice, very quaint, and uh, they have a lot of wine and cheese uh, to select from. And I think uh, if, you ever, if you're ever up there in the Boone or in the Blowing Rock area of the, uh, North Carolina, you, you, you might enjoy that. It's very, very nice. They do uh, wine tastings, and they do, uh, they have some wine parties there sometimes, although uh, I haven't had an opportunity to, to to uh, be part of those, uh, maybe one of these days when this whole pandemic thing is over. And let's hope we can get through that, right? Anyway, uh, I, I think that's uh, done it for me tonight. Well, you know, there is one more thing. Just one more thing. Anybody watch Columbo? Okay, now if you're in France, I'm sure you like Columbo, right? In the old Columbo series. I'm a big fan of Columbo. My whole family's a big fan of Columbo. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, just one more thing. Uh, Let's see. Uh, where was he going with that? Okay. The the one thing is that um, what we did on Twitch this past Wednesday night. I, and last week I polled uh, folks and asked, what would you think of me doing like a, a, a Wednesday night rewind? Or what I call the Wednesday night rewind. Where I show an older episode of Drink with Rick on a replay and then I could we could just hang out in the chat and talk and talk about that or talk about anything, and uh, we did that. We did that this past Wednesday night. Uh, I did that, and I I apologize. My mistake. Anybody watching on Twitch? This was a Twitch only event, okay? And, and on Twitch, I apologize because I did not put the little replay or pre-recorded thing up in the corner. So so folks that came in on it uh, after the first few minutes were rather confused and said, what, what is this? Uh, it's, 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 it's not live. It, oh, no, it's a replay. We had to explain it. And, and hopefully I didn't uh, put anybody out uh, by, by forgetting that. But I'll try to remember that next time. Lesson learned. But... Uh, 
the, we had a great time. We had uh, we, we had a pretty decent turnout in in the chat, and we had a great time. And enjoyed talking to with, with everyone there, and it, it was just a lot of fun. And we just got to talk about a lot of other things that were completely unrelated to anything else. Uh, had a lot of a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And uh, we're going to try it. We're, we're going to make that a regular thing. I'm going to pick a, 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 and the, these episodes are a lot of them are episodes that uh, aired in season one and. Uh, and, and aired in the early earlier days. Now this one, this particular one that I showed didn't, but it had not fully aired. It cut it cut off prematurely before the whole thing had aired on Twitch. So I I promised everyone that I would re-upload that at some point. And that's what I was doing uh, to to upload the the uh, or to stream the entire show because we lost power I think during that episode or something happened. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to make it a regular thing for a while. We're, we're not going to do it this next, the, the, this coming Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that, we're going to start making a regular thing. I'm going to show some of the early episodes of Drink with Rick, which at the very least should be rather uh, amusing. <laughs> when I'm just sort of learning how, how the whole thing works with streaming. But uh, it should be amusing at the, the very least. And then, of course, I will be. It's just going to be replay, but I will be in the chat live and we'll be able to interact live, just talk about stuff or you know anything related to or unrelated to the show. And just, just to have a good time. It's just, just, just for fun. Anyway, so that's pretty much all I got tonight. That's, that's all I've got. Um, I wanted to uh, tell everyone, first of all, I, I wanted to thank everybody in the chat for joining me tonight. I want to chat. Uh, I want to thank Tim. Thanks for being here tonight, and I uh, hope you're doing well. And and join me again next week. Ed, it's always great to see you, my good friend, uh, Ed. And um, if, uh, tell me, tell me. Uh, let's 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 a lot lot lose touch with each other. It's been too long since we really really had it. We actually, I did I did talk to Ed. Ed and I had a great conversation on the phone uh, a few weeks back, and it was just so long. It was I, I missed hearing his voice, and and he's just a great guy, and. Uh, we had a great time, and, and I hope I didn't keep you too late that night. <laughs> I really hope I didn't, but uh, we had a lot of fun and uh, catching up, and it was it was just it was just great. Uh, Stephanie, it's always great to see you, my good friend Stephanie. And please send in your your uh, give me a promo or two, and I will play it next week because I think your podcast is definitely worth sharing with everybody, and I want to I want I want to do that. Uh, my lovely wife Chi, of course, and. Uh, who else was here on the uh, Gordon as well? Don't want to forget Gordon. Gordon, it's always great to see you. Uh, Gordon, of course, who is our resident podcast uh, attorney, and uh, he knows uh, podcast law and and uh, uh, copyright law. I, I he's a really good guy to talk to, and I recommend Gordon. Uh, if you have any issues there with uh, with copyright, trademark. Uh, law, that sort of thing, with a uh, with a podcast or your live stream, whatever. That's very important too. Uh, the live streams on on Twitch. Those of you who are also live streamers, uh, Gordon is actually a pretty good guy to talk to, especially if you have concerns about copyright and uh, trademark issues. Uh, he's definitely the guy to go to. Uh, that's Gordon Firemark. So so check him out. I can send you some, uh, if you're not on Facebook, I can send you a link here later on. Or you just email me and I can send you some information for, uh, for him. A uh, really good guy. And uh, uh, Baba Blue said, uh, oh yes, Peter Falk is a hero here. Yes, he is. Yes, he is indeed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you just, just, uh, really, really talent and uh, real talent. And, um, uh, it's too bad. You know, they had a, they were going to actually do at one point, uh, one more, uh, Columbo. Uh, I think it was, was going to be called, uh, Columbo's last case, something like that. It's just that at that point he had, he had kind of, uh, no, Columbo, of course, uh, Peter Falk, uh, the actor, of course, he had quite a career, but he, he passed away uh, a few some years back of uh, uh, he had dementia uh, any that and and uh, it was it was kind of tragic to lose him that way, but uh, they were going to they had actually scripted uh, Columbo called Columbo's Last Case and uh, never got it made because it just, at that point he was just kind of, kind of too far gone to to do it which was really really sad because it would have been great to see one more Columbo. 
It really would. But we have the, the collection of all, we have the entire collection on, on DVD. And of course, they play it on locally here. They play it on MeTV and, and uh, a couple other places. But uh, uh, classic stuff, classic stuff. And Peter Falk was just such a phenomenal actor. He really was. Anyway, um, uh, Bumble Blue says, uh, 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 Jonathan is such a big fan, and so is a lot of people in France, including me. And I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Um, I also want to thank everyone on Twitch. I, I do thank everyone on, on Facebook for joining me tonight, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Also, on Twitch, boy, I've uh, got to uh, go up the list here, don't I? Uh, if I miss you, I'm sorry. But, but Paula TV, thank you for being here with me tonight. Uh, it's Jonathan. Also, I'm... Uh, I'm the car 15. Uh, thank you for being here with me. Uh, Zuhair uh, 68260 uh, is Trafe. Uh, thank you for being here. Algorith. Oh, you know, I somehow, how did I miss Algorith being here? Uh, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here tonight. Cyrano 77, French Master, FTLX G33. Uh, uh, am I saying this right? Baba Bell Blue. Baba Blue Blue. Baba Blue. It's uh, been a lot of wine tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize if I, if I mix it up, but thank you for being here. I really appreciate your participation in the chat. Uh, Madeline S. Nassen Jr. Uh, says hi, and thank you for being here. Uh, M. Lavost and Mod76, uh, La Galinette de Mc, uh, Michael. Uh, Michael, I can't even read uh, some of these, uh, actually, because uh, my... Uh, it's hard to read uh, on the uh, screen. Uh, I'm a, uh, let's see. I, I got that. Check up, uh, say, 97. Some of these were not meant to be <laughs> read, were they? <laughs> uh, Rasta Lives, uh, Polo T, um, everyone who joined me in the chat, uh, Devil Jen, uh, M. Lavost, and uh, a lot, uh, some of you that, that, that have been in the chat um, uh, before, many times before, and I do recognize you well. Uh, CM Cinder is in the chat. I missed her. Sorry about that, CM Cinder. Thanks for being in the, in the chat. Killian88330. Uh, um, and uh, who else did I miss? Zohair68260. And, um, well, uh, I, I, I hope I didn't miss anybody. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Laudic, of course. Mod 76, La Galene de Michel. Um, did, I miss, did I mention you already? Uh, let's see. Tom Antio, of course. And uh, anyone else I'm, I'm missing in the chat? It's, uh, I, I just want to thank you for being here in the chat with me tonight. I do appreciate each and every one of you being here. Uh, this... Uh, Every week is a great experience for me. I enjoy doing this. I'm just doing this for fun, and uh, maybe one day I'll do it from for for to to make something off of too to pay the bills, not to get rich. I'm definitely but pay just keep the lights on, but uh, in the studio. But I do I do appreciate you being here. And uh, Jonathan says we love you, Rick. Well, I'm right back at you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here's to you. Anyway. It's time to go. If I were Carol Burnett, I'd break out in song, but I'm not. <laughs> I can't sing where the darn anyway. But I want to say um, thank you for, for your time because your time is valuable. I know that, and I appreciate that. I do. And uh, I want to say that next week, next week, I, I think we're going to open, uh, ah, Jacob's Creek. That's another. That's an Australian wine. Um, but Jacob's Creek will open that one up because we opened a Pinot. That uh, I think we was that a Pinot? There's a cab. No, there's a cab. Um, Where is that thing? It's in the back here. It's a cab. It was a Cabernet Sauvignon. This one's a Shiraz. So uh, we'll we'll open that next week unless something else comes up. If if someone wants to send me a bottle of wine for me to review, I will promise I'll give it a fair review fair review and we'll enjoy every drop of it along the way in the meantime i want everybody to have a safe week i want you to have a great week and i want you to have a safe week please do not drink and drive please that's very very important don't drink and drive drink out of the comfort of your home your apartment your your uh, hotel room wherever you are 
please do there. Call an Uber, call a Lyft if you have to. Call whatever it is, call a taxi, whatever. Please just don't, don't, don't drink and drive. Do not text and drive. That's very dangerous. Just, I want you to have a great week, and I want you to have a safe week, because I want you to join me here next week so we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.